What is an oshi? Well, the literal definition would be something like this. Yuri! To recommend. Alternatively, we have the other oshi. <laughs> to push. Having an oshi has been a huge subculture in the Japanese otaku community for the past decades, and more recently in the western one too. Of course, in the current season of anime, we also have the legendary Oshinoko. The fact that this title has three layers of meanings and straight up not translated officially says quite a lot, doesn't it? Ai is my oshi, Chisato was my oshi, Chris Pratt is Koopas. my oshi. But what is an oshi? And how does one go from simply having an oshi to turning it into a full-time job with a salary of negative 50,000 a year? Let's take a look at the oshi culture. Starting with literal dictionary definitions, the word osu, the verb of oshi, means to recommend. So naturally, the noun form oshi would be recommendation. In our context though, we'd have to extend a little further. To put it simply, the easiest explanation would be best boy slash girl. If you want to do some mental gymnastics and ask how the hell recommendation got turned into best boy slash girl, then think something like, you love them so much you'd recommend them to all your friends and family. I'm sure my mom would love my Oshi Noel's huge t- But if the extent of having an Oshi was having 100 message long threads online arguing over best girl like the average anime community, then... Well, this video wouldn't have to exist. Just go to any anime subreddit. I'm sure they'll respect your opinion. The word oshi goes as far back as the 1980s, where idol fans would use the term oshimen, short form for oshi member, to describe their favorite member in an idol group. The widespread use of this term can be attributed to two chan users discussing Morning Musume, an idol group in the 2000s, and would be further spread by everyone's favorite idol group. AKB48. No, the real one. The usage of this niche word went boom, and just like any other internet word that sees mainstream use, wins some new word award and gets put as an actual word in some dictionaries. Imagine if the word waifu or best girl was in the Oxford dictionary. Waifu, a fictional woman loved by a real person, typically one that wants to marry and or fuck her. Now that you have a one minute history lesson, you might be asking. Alright, so what's the difference between an oshi and best girl or waifu? And to be honest, I don't think they're that different in meaning. What is different is the average level of intensity. See, when you have best girl discussions with people online in English, I feel like it's usually limited to my favorite girl in this certain show or my favorite female character. Not saying that this kind of meaning can't be used in Japanese, gotta have someone defend Nino in these wars we have, but as a huge generalization with a huge asterisk, when a Japanese otaku walks up to you and tells you he or she's someone, he looks something like this. Or this. The level of dedication I see some Japanese otaku have to their oshi is more than what most parents have to their firstborn child. It shows. Why financially support a real-life tiny human with a blood connection to you when you can financially support a fake human by buying their face plastered over any inanimate object imaginable? I have zero evidence to back this up, but I would imagine the reason for this level of dedication has to do with its origins. Idol culture. In some idol groups, the member that gets to be the center in songs depends on fan votes through CDs, which fans burn ungodly amounts of money on to vote. When your word originates from a group of fans spending their life savings on voting for their favorite pretty girl that they might have a 30 second chance of talking to if they're lucky, you can probably see where this dedication comes from. To all you Oshinoko fans, I think this does give some good exposition as to why being the star of your own idol group is so important, why there's so much inside sabotaging, why idols want to appear perfect, playing the perfect girlfriend role, lying to their audience, giving them what they want. It's all a part of this culture where Oshis fight over who gets to be the center, a thing that can greatly affect the idol's salary, and you know, there's only one center. Obviously, this can lead to some very mentally unwell fans, like this guy over here, but that's a different story for a different day. While the origins do come from idol fans, it's become widespread enough now for even, say, Normie to describe who their favorite in a band is. Think favorite X person in X group, and it probably works. Hell, nowadays you could call your favorite YouTuber or 
uh, train your Oshi, and it could make sense. So yeah, it's not 100% just a word for maniacs, but more so from my personal experience, the average Japanese anime otaku with a hard Oshi is batshit insane and seems to make money out of an endless void. A more recent boom where this term has bled into even the Western community is the VTuber fans, where people refer to their favorite VTuber as their Oshi. Again, obviously a generalization, but when someone calls a certain Korone their Oshi, there is a 70% chance they watch her like 10 hours a fucking day. Like streamer, like viewer. I would go into the stuff VTuber Oshis do, but you probably already know. Throwing money, throwing more money, throwing even more money, and throwing something more valuable than money. Time. The point that I'm painfully trying to get across is many of these Oshi supporters are fucking dedicated. To the point where when you search for definitions in Japanese articles, some would unironically compare it to worshipping a god. Which actually isn't that wrong now that I think about it. Because let me introduce you to Oshi Katsu, the life of an Oshi supporter. If you thought people going to church weekly was time costly, then the idea of Oshikatsu would surely cause a mental shutdown. Oshikatsu, in the literal sense, means Oshi activity, since katsu is short for katsudo, or the other term I like more, Oshigoto, quite literally means Oshi thing. Like, thing. It may sound like a word come up by a 5 year old who uses the word thing too much, but that's because it's a pun. Oshigoto can also mean work, so like supporting your oshi is just like going to work, and you'll see why. Out of the various activities performed by these cultists, let's start with the simplest one, collecting goods. It can range from the simple things, like being happy you got a cool t-shirt and a nice figure of your favorite character, to turning your house into a holy shrine to worship your goddess. I do not exaggerate. Look at this shit! Look at it! We have dedicated can badge bags, cars, full body armor. Chief, I don't think this is what they meant by white knighting. Some of these creations of god have a specific name such as Ita Bag or Itakar, where Ita stands for pain. Whether it's painful to your wallet, soul, the state of humanity, you decide. We should just rename waves to Ita humans. Then of course, we have more of the basic activities such as celebrating your Oshi's birthday. And let's get this straight. You're celebrating with them. They're not celebrating with you. We do have an extra layer to the good section though which is idol fans. Even amongst the insanity known as weebs, comparing the average weeb to the average idol fan is like comparing a student sad he got a B and Torfin. Idol fans take Oshi to a whole new level by publicly parading their merch, particularly at concerts, wearing custom-made clothing, driving your car, and the best of all, gotcha, until you roll your best girl. Classic. Some idol groups might also have different colors assigned to different boys or girls, so you put your Oshi's colors on your pen light amid songs to give them your support. Yes, this explains why at every idol concert, idol fans seem to be obsessed with making the LGBTQ flag. Wait, actually, the last activity I want to mention, and possibly the most interesting one, is something called Seichi Junle, which translates directly to Holy Land Pilgrimage. Yes, that is the official translation. So what is this holy land, you may ask? Merch shops? Live events? Concerts? <laughs> no. Alright, I want you to think of some, uh, high school anime. I'll say Bochi the Rock. Now imagine going to every single location that has appeared for even a frame in the episode, eating the exact food the characters do, doing the exact activities the characters do, trying to take a picture of the exact angle the location is shown in the anime, etc. You get the point. It's basically going to the same locations the characters did, trying to find or feel some kind of connection to your best boy or girl. This doesn't have to be fictional though. If you simp some real-life idol, then just go to every single location they've posted a picture of on Instagram or something. Eat any food at any restaurant they've posted. Try and find each piece of clothing they're wearing and buy it. Yeah. I guess the point is, your Oshi is holy and you want to do anything you can to feel closer to him or her. Is it creepy? Ah, uh, you decide that. I have no comment. But yes. This is the life of a true otaku. 
This is the life of a true pilgrimager. This is the life of someone with no life. Oshi culture is quite a unique culture that's developed over the past decades in Japan. You can argue that it encourages all the parasocial thoughts and behaviors we've increasingly seen with the rise of VTubers, but again, that's another topic for another day. As much as I've trash-talked weebs this entire video, I do so out of also being one of these creatures myself, and I think there's a very endearing side to how much a fictional character or person who doesn't even know us can change our lives. Besides, as someone who's gone on a Love Live pilgrimage, I must say, it's very fun. Especially with friends. Essentially having an anime journey of your own. It's so fucking cool how many anime are based off so many real-life locations. I also must say, it's quite intriguing that this Oshi culture has essentially become what you could call a form of loyalty culture, where people really choose a best boy or girl and support them to the end. It's obviously good for business and also why I think Japan is one of the only places in the world an idol culture can exist, grow, and blossom in the first place. And finally, to all of you people who have been screaming for the past 10 minutes that it would have been easier explaining Oshi if I had described it as Stan, I know! And I didn't because I fucking hate that word!